Yo, what's up, everybody, and welcome to NXT with Najee. This is episode seven, a part of the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, aka The Whip Show. We're back again, right here in my house, as per usual, in uh, in Central Florida. We're having a good time. We uh, it's been it's been a very interesting couple of weeks. We're gonna cover the second episode of the double taping which was, I believe, February 20th, 2024 of NXT. But guess what? I have another guest this week, my friends. Me and this guy have known each other for well over 10 years. We go way, 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 way back. But ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Tone. Hey, Najee, how's it going? It's going good, my guy. It's going good, man. You know, just recovering. A little sore from my football game yesterday, which we won, by the way. Shout out to Congrats. the Central Florida Congrats Buccaneers. to you, my man. Yes, thank you. Thank you, man. I'm happy to have you on here, brother. We we go back to my first year playing semi-pro football when I played for the Kalamazoo Outlaws. That's, I think that's it was like, 2011 when you and I first met. Oh, it was actually sooner than that. It was about 2009, believe it or not. That was my, right. Yeah, that was my first year. First right. year with them, man. We, we've, we've stayed in contact. I know I've been traveling all over the place, but um, let's tell, tell the viewers a little something about yourself for those people who don't know you. Well, my name's Tony Tone. I am the manager of Monsters for Battle in the Creek, which is a pro wrestling promotion in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, they call me the, man, the uh, manager of Monsters because I am the manager for your reigning and defending Battle in the Creek champion, the monster, Condro Khan. Yes, sir. That's right. You heard it there. That man does refereeing and he does managing. It's incredible, man. A guy, guy's a busy man. I don't know how he finds the time to do I've, some of this stuff. I've refed, I manage, I do commentary. I do whatever they need me to do. That's right. Man, many hats. I like many, it. Many, many. So I'm very, very happy to have you on tonight, man. Thank you so much. So we're going to get into this. We're going to have to dive right into this first match, which was our North American champion, Oba Femi, taking on Lexus King. So Lexus King, once again, shows out, kind of impresses me a little bit more. He's winning me over and winning more fans over week by week with his kind of like vintage 90s style wrestling in a way. And I think that's what really gets me with him, minus all the Michael Jackson jackets that he wears sometimes. That drives me a little crazy. But Oba fittest thing crowd fully behind him like he does every single week i i really really love the way that they're just continuously pushing him and not letting him look weak to anybody regardless of how many people are in that ring regardless of who's challenging him it's it's awesome to see that kind of powerhouse live and exist in the nxt so and still your north american champion oba femi now tony i got a question for you on this one Every week that I'm on here, when I do have a guest, I like to ask people their opinions about Lexus King. So I would like to know uh, how do you feel about Alexis? Uh, how you feel about Lexus King, and especially with what he's doing in the locker room week in and week out? Um, I'm a big fan of Lexus King. Um, he's been in the business for quite a long time. Of course, a lot of people know he is Brian Pillman Jr. He has a long history of being in the business. Um, and he brings a lot of knowledge, experience to the locker room, um, especially to everyone who might not have been in, who might not have a family member in the business or might not have as much knowledge. So he brings knowledge, experience, and everything else to the table. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't, couldn't agree with you more, man. I, I think the next, like, five years for him is going to be something crazy very similar to like how tiffany stratton kind of blew up within two years i think that's probably the same route we'll get with lexus king as time goes by but all right so right after that i normally like i said i don't do promos on my show most of the time but i gotta talk about the wolf dogs and their them celebrating uh their tag team victory it was awesome it was a good time and if you watch the the clip on wwe we were trying to get them to acknowledge Spear of Days for about a month. Mm -hmm. And they finally did it. And they actually cut the camera to me and my group of friends celebrating about it, which I thought was really funny. But I it's just that. awesome. It's just awesome to see those guys get what they what they deserve. Like, and now we got we got Braun on SmackDown. My last episode, I could have swore he was going to Raw. Like I swore up and down he was signing that Raw contract. How do you feel about him going to SmackDown? I think that he has a lot of competition his way as a singles competitor on SmackDown. Um, you know, it just depends on who they who they put him up against. 
Um, are they going to feed him to Roman Reigns? Are they, are they going to feed him to someone else on the roster? Um, that's just a thing that we have to wait and see. But I think that they're giving him a big push right now, uh, sending him to, to uh, SmackDown. And we just have to wait and see what they're going to do with him. Oh, yeah. I think that, that that Braun versus Roman match, whenever it does happen, those poor guys are rib cages, man. It's just going to be spear, 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 spear. spear, spear. spear. <laughs> it's like, it's, um, like, Roman, it's uh, like Roman versus Goldberg, spear versus spear. Yeah, except except the other spear is actually good. Like the Goldberg spear kind of died out as he got older. <laughs> yep. But all right. So now second match, Roxanne Perez versus Run Sinclair. We got Roxanne winning by a crossface. But dear NXT, let Ren Sinclair cook, please. Y'all are kind of giving it a short end of the stick. I guarantee, I know she just got there, but if you do your research on her, I say it every week. She's a beast, bro. So let her let her be the beast that she is in front of this new audience. You know what I mean? Like it seems like they're kind of playing her as like a bubbly personality instead of being like as dominant as some of us actually know that she can be. But Roxanne gets that one by crossface. The continuation for Roxanne's push just keeps on going. So next match is the third match, which was Brooks Jensen versus Josh Briggs. Now this is a classic tag team that broke up and now you got them going one-on-one, hard hitting, slobber knockers, you know, the old schools would say. But Tony, I got to ask, do you think that the whole tag team split up then facing each other thing is getting you know a little overplayed like do you think that there will ever be a day where we just see a tag team casually break up and be civil with each other you know history repeats itself and tag teams breaking up for a while then getting back together then breaking up you know it's like a taylor swift it's like a taylor swift romance it doesn't make any sense to me oh no we said we I'm a big fan of old school wrestling. We saw it in the 90s and early 2000s, the Steiner brothers. What happened with them? They were together as a tag team for a long time, broke up. Scotty joined NWO. Okay, cool, whatever. And then they started tagging again. And then we got we got Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. They broke up, got back together. It's a Taylor Swift love story, man. I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not with the swiftiness of this uh, situation here. I'm not with it. Um, yo, so who? what's a tag team in your life that you wish just never broke up, that you wish just could have stayed together forever? You know, I was a big fan of the uh, Road Warriors growing up, and they, they broke up. Um, rest in peace to both of them. But, um, you know, Animal was a big powerhouse. You know, I thought he could have had a – Big future, but you know, they just didn't push him very well. But, um, and Hawk, he battled his demons, so I think that that's one of the stories about why they broke up as a team. Um, but yeah, I was a big fan of the Road Warriors, and you know, I was devastated when they broke up and the Steiner brothers that hurt me too. I was a big fan of both Rick and Scotty, you know, yeah, they they, they should just stay the team, yeah. See, that's how I feel about RVD with anybody. Like, especially those early 2000s runs, like RVD and Kane, RVD bro, like, and bro, my God, like that undone masking by itself was just already fantastic. But I was scared we're gonna move back. when he took off his mask. I was scared. Yeah, I think all of us were a little bit like we didn't know what the <laughs> hell we were getting ready to see. But then yeah. once he had like the, the like the clown shave thing going on up here, that was, that was different. But I mean, like it still freaked me out a little bit because I had to have been like maybe 13 or something like that when I had right. It. But, all right, we're going to jump back into these next couple of matches. All right, fourth match was J.C. Jane with Thea Hall and Jasmine Nix versus Ariana Grace. This all kind of stemmed off of a promo earlier in the show where Ariana Grace kind of um, called out J.C. and maybe her loyalties in some sort of way, um, which is seen at the end of the match. Unfortunately, Ariana Grace eats the pin this time. She had been on a streak for the last about month and a half, but took the one, two, three to J.C. Jane, but just when Thea was going to raise J.C. Jane's hand, Jasmine Nix kind of bumped her out of the way and raised her hand for her, and it seems that the loyalty is to Thea might be shifting towards uh, Jasmine Nix. So we will see how that one plays out over the next couple of weeks going into Roadblock, and uh, we're going to move on. Sixth 
Yes. Oh, no. Fifth match. Fifth match. I apologize. Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Chase U and Riley Osborne during... Riley Osborne's in the corner. But during the um, celebration of the Tag Team Championships, uh, they got interrupted by Chase U and Axiom and Nathan Frazier, which led to this match. So whoever wins this will be the number one contender. Nothing too crazy in this match outside of at one point in time, I was making fun of uh, Chase because his shoe came untied and they cut to commercial and he tied it. So that was pretty funny for me. Um, High flying, Duke still being a brick house of a human being. But Chase U ends up walking away with the victory. So now we have Braun and Baron versus Chase U for the tag team championships. I'm not quite sure if that'll be this week or if it'll be a roadblock. Um, but I guess we'll find out. It's another one, another one of those time will tell things. Moving into the sixth match is Kalani Jordan versus last legend with Jakar Jackson in her corner. This is a grudge match, some sort of, like, in a way, if you will. Lash really wants to prove that she's the biggest name in the locker room that should be talked about when it comes to the NXT women's title, even though Kalani seems to be the most popular superstar in the back in the locker room. So Lash took it upon herself to call her out, ask her to go one-on-one. And, of course, as in my personal opinion, as it should go, Lash Legend wins the match. Now, for me, I feel like we got this match a little too early. Like, this is a match down the line that I think could have been one that would have been absolutely incredible and stole the show. But I'm, I, I don't work for WWE, so I can't sit there and try to guess what they have cooking. But maybe, it's, maybe it was just a trial match for the future or something like that. But who knows? Last match of the night, and then we're going to get into my questions for my guests. This one's a little tough to talk about, especially being in that crowd. I'm going to ask you, Tony, how you felt about the situation watching it. Um, it's Lyra versus Shotzi for the NXT Women's Championship. This match had the potential to be a show stealer. Like, really could have just brought the house down because these two wrestlers are absolutely incredible at what they do. But unfortunately, Shotzi blew out her knee very, very early in the match. And I, it was really tough because we could see her rolling around on the ground, like being in the crowd. And then once the scream started, it was like, bro, we knew something was really, really bad. The energy inside the building, you could have heard a pin drop. Like, that's how intense it was once it happened. And once they escorted her out, she tried to walk herself. And then she tried to turn around and say thank you to the fans, and she still couldn't do it. And once she got to the back, I heard the loudest blood-curdling scream I could have possibly heard. And, man, it was heartbreaking. But how, how did that feel for you watching that at home, man? Because I know that had to have been interesting. You know, I was – I was sitting at home watching that match and I couldn't believe the injury that Shotzi suffered. Um, you know, as an athlete, injuries are not fun whatsoever. You got to take time off. You got to take time away. You got to rehab the injury. Um, you got fans. Fans are probably blowing up Shotzi's Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you call it. Giving the well wishes, wanting to know when she's going to come back. We don't know, but I think that match could have been a show stealer. It could have it that match could have gone on 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I could have gave that match a, a quite a bit of time, and the fans could have still been been into that match the whole time. But she yeah. blew out her knee and unfortunately injuries happen. Yep. And it sucks, man, because she I'm pretty sure she was on her way to Perth. I'm pretty sure she was supposed to be in the elimination chamber match, if not a qualifying one. So that's that's really tough for her, man, because I feel like she's already been through some injuries, been through some really tough personal things. Like, I know her sister and her family are going through some stuff, too. But what do you think this means for Shotzi and her future? Well, you know, we just have to see how long she's going to be out, you know? I mean, of course, this this might derail some things as far as storylines go. Um, you know? She's she's a member of the uh, SmackDown roster. She was sent down to NXT, to, uh, NXT for, a, for a short while. Um, does she return to SmackDown? Does she return to NXT? We don't know. Um, we don't know the we don't know the timetables. Um, 
You know, she might she might miss WrestleMania weekend. We we don't know when she's gonna come back. Yeah, I hope she can at least make WrestleMania, even if it's on crutches or something. It would be really nice just to see her there, have her presence there, and for the crowd to just give her that love because she knows she knows she's received it via social media and whatnot. But I feel like having her there in person and just having a crowd be able to give that to her as well would be. Really I feel good like as a member of the main roster. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, you're um, good. You're good. I feel like as a member of the main roster, she should be there at least for the uh, signings and and everything. She should she should be there in in uh, Philly. You know, if she has to be on crutches, okay, cool. But you know, she still she still deserves to be there. Yeah, I agree, man. But they pulled a fast one, and they ended up actually booking Lash for the second time in one night. This time, she actually gets to fight for the NXT title, taking Shotzi's spot. God, I wish this would have happened to anybody else. Because I want Lash to win that belt. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Lash has had such a good push the last, like, four or five months, like, slamming Otis, all this other stuff that she's just been going through, she's been a powerhouse. And to just kind of have her get a title shot and then lose it kind of sucks. But it is what it is. We understand. We respect it. So thank you, Lash, for coming out and having Shotzi's back. Thank you, Lyra, for literally working that match on the fly and still making it a good one. But that is that's a wrap for this week's NXT. Going into Roadblock, we got one more episode left before Roadblock happens, and I'm super excited about it. But of course, as I always do with my guests at the end of the show, I got some questions for my guy Tony. So you ready, bud? Let's go. All right. So you've worked in so many organizations ranging from semi-professional football to the world of professional wrestling. After all of these years, how do you keep your drive? What keeps you in it? Like, what about what about the love for these things that just makes you want to get up in the morning and put the, the suit on? Me, the, the number one thing that keeps me going is the massive energy from the fans. Um, the, the, the minute the doors open to the minute – the, the last bell rings. I love hearing the uh, crowd reactions, whether if it's negative, positive, just that energy going. And that's what keeps me going is the fans. Yes, because we support our refs. If you ever hear us at NXT shows, we are on the refs <laughs> constantly. But yes, bro, I love it. I love it. So what is your favorite match that you ever refereed and why? Oh, my goodness. I've, ref- I've refereed probably about 200 matches in my career. And one of my favorite ones was for a promotion um, called RCW. They're in um, Indiana, Northern Indiana. And it was a wrestler named Brutus Dillon, who's a 400 pound monster. Um, he, he goes by the nickname Effin Brutal. That's his nickname, Effin Brutal. Makes, Brutus sense. Dillon. Makes sense. And he was going against Madman Fulton, who used to be an NXT um, former TNA talent. And, um, I was the smallest guy in the ring. All right. I'm five, six. You got Madman Fulton. Who's almost, who's, who's about six, eight, six, nine. You got Brutus Dillon. Who's almost seven foot. And, and then you got a little short referee, five foot <laughs> looking like a munchkin from, from the wizard of Oz. Slide between the legs to make the three count, <laughs> man. I tell you what, that match was one of my favorites. Those two faced off. I did, I did two or three of their matches and both times was was a great match. Being the smallest guy in the room, the smallest guy in the ring wasn't the wasn't the best idea. But you know, hey, you know, you have to make it work. Hey, trust me, I get you. I'm five seven on a good day, brother. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> All right. So last question. So you met my hometown hero, Rob Van Dam. And basically spent a whole entire weekend with him when you were working Battle at the Creek. So tell me, what was that like to be the right-hand man to Mr. Monday Night, the whole effing show? Rob Van Dam is a, is a great person um, outside of the ring. Um, he had a lot of memories of his time spent in his hometown of Battle Creek, Michigan. Also um, my hometown, too. What's up? What's up? Yours, too, as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get that shout out in there to Battle Creek. Um, and it was just fun hanging out with him for most of the day. Um, the uh, day that we had battle in the Creek, uh, that night he took on, um, Brian cage defeated Brian cage and had a huge hometown celebration. And 
he just has a lot of stories uh, from inside the ring, outside the ring. And it's just, he's a very positive guy. He's a very positive guy. Um, if there's anything negative around him, he, he'll tell you his honest thoughts. He's like, dude, that's not cool. And then that's, <laughs> and then he just moves on. So, but, you know, it's fun hanging out with Rob. Um, my girlfriend and I, we first ran into him outside Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids. Um, him and his girlfriend was out, or him and his wife, excuse me, was outside for a smoke break. And um, it's kind of hard to pass it down when you're, when you're right <laughs> Monday night, Mr. Rob Van Dam. It's, it's hard. Yeah, I'm, I would have rolled one for him. So, Yo, also, Rob, if you are watching this, I would love to have you on this show. You already follow me on X. My grandma used to be an art teacher. We already got that connection, Rob. So if you're watching us, get at me, bro. Please, please. I'd love to have you on the show. Please, 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 please. <laughs> but I will, all right, y'all. I will see what I can do for you. I'll see what hey, I can that'd do. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing, brother. That'd be amazing. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in. Tony, if you got any of your social medias or anything that you want to throw out there, now will be the time to drop that link. Just, just, just follow Battle in the Creek on Facebook, Instagram. Um, that's where you can see what's going on, what what promotions in Michigan we're going to be working with this year, um, and who we're going to be bringing in for the next Battle in the Creek show. Yeah, man. If y'all need a host, let me know. Hey, hey <laughs> I will bring you it. in, man. I will bring you in. Yes, I'm, I love it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for participating. My name is Najee. This has been episode seven of NXT with Najee, a part of the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, a.k.a. The Whip Show. Shout out to my guy, Tony Tone, for coming in today. We will catch y'all next week. We're two weeks away from Roadblock, y'all. Peace.